In this lecture, we'll start talking about some of the debug environments that exist, uh, really a couple of debug environments that are commonly used. Our Arduino won't give us access to any to these environments, but uh, it's sort of important for making IoT devices in general that you understand some of these debug environments, because if you're going to make some bigger ones, you're going to use some of these. So remote debugger, this is a common type of environment. Uh, you can see there are basically two components. There's a host, host computer up there. There's a target. The target is the, uh, the target platform that we're dealing with. So in our case, that would be the Arduino or whatever board, and Raspberry Pi, whatever board we want to work with. So the host computer is where you, you as a user, as a programmer, actually interface with the debugging environment. So you are using the typing debug commands into the host. Those are getting transmitted to the target over some kind of communication link. So the front end is running on the host uh, that you, the programmer, are accessing. Now there's a debug monitor, some code, hidden on the target. I say hidden, uh, hidden like a bootloader, okay? It's on the target. So there it has to be code running, a debug monitor code that's running on the, um, on the platform, on the Arduino, let's say. So it's typically triggered when some debug event occurs. So debug event, there are a lot of possible debug events. One debug event is a breakpoint, let's say. You set a breakpoint, say at the host, you said, okay, break on line 23, you select that. And then you run the code, and when line 23 happens, the target stops. It recognizes the debug event, it stops, and then uh, it stops the running, and then it goes back to the host and lets the host have control again. So those, that's a typical debug event. Often, the host, uh, host program, the front end, will have some kind of a way you can, uh, you can force a debug event. You hit control C, let's say, into the, uh, or click on a button, a stop button in the uh, a GUI built on the host, and then that sends a command to the target to stop execution at that point. So you've got a debug monitor, and the debug monitor is the code running on the target that's talking to the host. Okay? So uh, there's a communication going on between the target and the host, and that communication has to be managed by some code running on the target. So that code running on the target is the debug monitor, and it, it will stop execution of the code on the target, it will monitor the communication link to see commands from the host. It will also provide debug information to the host. So, for instance, if the, the host you type, uh, the host you type print the contents of value variable x, that command will be sent over the communication interface, and then the debug monitor will receive it, will retrieve the value of x, and send it back over the communication link. So, the host front end is actually talking to this debug monitor, which is running on your Arduino, uh, but it's uh, along with Whatever the, uh, the actual code is, the, the, the functional code, the application code, there's a debug monitor running in the background. Uh, hitting a breakpoint, receiving a request from the host, these are the type of things that are debug events that typically cause uh, the execution of the target to stop and cause interaction, allow interaction with the host. Uh, and the monitor maintains the communication link. The monitor and the host together uh, maintain that link. Uh, so, advantages of this type of, uh, of setup. So you get good run control. <clears throat> you can uh, stop, you can set breakpoints uh, to stop execution when you want to. You can actually force execution to stop from the host. You hit a button and it'll send a command to stop execution. So you get good run control. Uh, the monitor can alter memory and registers. Right, so the debug monitor, it's code that's running on the Arduino. Since it's running on the Arduino, it has direct access to the registers and the memory on the Arduino. So now, uh, with a debug monitor, you can actually control the registers. You have controllability of the registers and the, uh, and the memory on the Arduino. And also, you can read it. You have observability of those, too. Perfect functional accuracy. So by that, I mean that the code, when it executes, will run exactly the way it would on a real target platform because it is running on a real target platform. So you get perfect functional accuracy. Unlike, say, you had a simulator or something like that, you don't have to worry about functional, functional accuracy. Disadvantages. Uh, so these debug interrupts, these debug events that allow interaction with the host, those things alter the timing. They stop, they mess with the timing. They stop the execution of the target, altering the timing. And so you can't get real-time monitoring using a, using a system like this. So it de depending on how important timing is to you, this may or may not work. This may or may not be sufficient. Now, even for timing-critical systems, using a remote debug, debug setup is a good idea at first, but eventually you need to test the timing too, so this type of setup wouldn't be as useful. <clears throat> 
and you need a spare communication channel. So the host and the target are speaking over some communication channel, so you need an extra communication channel, one that's not being used functionally. So if the application is already using the Ethernet, right, the program's using it for whatever the application is, then you can't use, you, or you, not that you can't, but you have a difficult time using the Ethernet also for debugging. Now it turns out you can share the Ethernet for both, but if you do that, then all the, whenever the debugging information is going over the Ethernet pack, over the Ethernet uh, connection, then functional data can't be going over the Ethernet connection, right? So there's a trade-off, and it can slow the machine down and so on. So you need some spare internet, some spare connection, which we fortunately have with an Arduino. Uh, UART uh, serial connection is what we're going to use, and we'll talk about that later. Oh, another thing is that you would like to have the program in RAM in order to, to add the breakpoints. So this has to do with how software breakpoints are added. Now, you know in Arduino, the program is generally in flash. It's resident in flash and executed out of the flash memory. But you would like uh, to have it in RAM because flash is slow to reprogram and RAM is fast. So uh, if you, you can reprogram flash, but it takes a long time. You have to, um, relatively long time. When I say long time, I mean it's a, uh, milliseconds, okay, a long time, lots of milliseconds. That's slow. So you would like it to be in RAM because whenever you set a breakpoint, and I don't want to go into the details of this, but when you set a breakpoint, you have to alter the code temporarily. You go to the place, the line of the code, where the breakpoint's going to be, and you change that instruction to something else temporarily in order to, set, to stop the code at that point. And so you need to be able to, stop, to change the code relatively quickly in order to set these breakpoints, and Flash makes that harder. Okay, so another way to go, which is more common in modern processors, has become common, is the use of an embedded debug interface. So what this is, uh, you see this in modern processors nowadays, you have embedded debug logic, uh, debug logic that's actually built into the processor. So inside the processor or the microcontroller, in addition to all the logic that actually executes the code, they put debug logic, uh, hardware, that actually does debug activities, they build it right in. So you don't have to have a debug monitor anymore, right? The debug monitor was a program that runs on your Arduino, let's say. This is saying, look, forget the program. We're going to put hardware in there that does those functions directly, which makes it faster. Also makes it possible to do in parallel. It's, it's efficient. It costs a little bit because it costs area on the chip, right? The chip has to get bigger to accommodate the extra logic that you're embedding in there. But it's a useful feature, and it's getting more and more common because space is relatively cheap on a chip. So typically it's an optional IP block, uh, intellectual property block, an uh, optional piece of hardware that you can add to the chip design. Uh, there are several embedded trace macro cell from ARM. So ARM processors, they have embedded trace macro cell, which is their, the name for their debug logic or for some part of their debug logic. They have several trace macro cells, but embedded trace macro cell is the main one. Uh, Freescale uses background debug mode, which is a similar idea. Uh, debug logic is permanently built into the processor. So uh, what that means is that logic, since it's debug logic, generally it's used when you're developing the system, but once you manufacture the system and you, you sell it, that logic is, it seems wasted. It's not using, but not being used, right? Because you're not generally debugging it out in the field. Now you could, but that is much less common. So that logic, uh, this is why somehow it seems like a waste sometimes, because you say, well, I'm using that, that logic, I'm paying more, to build this chip with this extra debug logic, but in, in the field it's never used. That's true. It's not a waste though because debug costs a lot of money and anything that can speed that and make that cheaper is not a waste. Uh, a few dedicated pins have to be added. So this debug information that is extracted by this embedded debug logic, it has to be sent to say a host machine, right, uh, that the user is interfacing with, is using. So in order to do that, you need some pins to send that data. And that's important. The pins are very, pins are precious, right? Uh, there aren't that many pins on a chip. Even a very densely packed chip uh, has a lot of pins. Compared to the amount of logic inside the chip, there are very few pins. So pins are precious. So uh, you don't want to use too many pins just for debugging purposes. But uh, these debug, debug interfaces require a certain number of pins. Usually they're, they transfer data serially, so they re need very few pins. But they do need a few pins dedicated to debug. So here are some of the debug and trace features you would expect to find in embedded debug logic. Uh, 
uh, breakpoints, the ability to set breakpoints inside your code, watch points, uh, where what happens is it, it's sort of like a breakpoint. It's uh, at a certain point in code, let's say, or on a memory location, if some event happens, then it, set, then it stops the code. So maybe if you, all, if you write to a particular memory location, then it stops it. So every time you write, it'll check, and if you write to this location, then it stops the code. Uh, on the fly memory access, so you can access the memory locations uh, at runtime uh, without stopping the code. The, the, you can observe the memory locations. You can read them and observe them. Uh, you can change processor values, so change register values and things like this. Uh, single step through the code, so step one, ste one step at a time, one instruction at a time, which allows you to it's basically fine grain run control. So you execute one instruction, you check the value. Execute the next instruction, check the value. And you can zero in on exactly when the value is going wrong. Uh, you can export exceptions to debugger. So when you hit a watch point, it can go to debugger logic and start running debug logic if you want it to. Uh, you can uh, export software generated data. So what that means is actually we're going to be doing this. We will actually be doing something, uh, something just like this. You can, uh, you can basically allow that um, the person who writes the code running on your target, they can put print statements, effectively print statements, which send data from the processor to the host. So you can basically add uh, error messages manually. You can say, oh, this error has happened now, and it'll be sent on the wires, whatever the communication interface is. It'll be sent to the host, and the, the de person debugging can see the messages, and that can be helpful. Uh, time step information for each event, so you can trace the events. So when events happen, like certain interesting things happen, a memory access happens or something like that, you can send a time, time stamp and say, look, this memory access happened at this time, this happened at that time. Sometimes in time and critical situations, time and critical systems, you want to know exactly when things happened and the time separation between events. So uh, the, the hardware that you add for debug can add that time stamp and send it to the host. An instruction trace. Uh, you can have special purpose hardware that tells you which instructions are executed in what sequence. So this is very useful sometimes. If you want to know, you know something crashed, you want to see what happened that led up to that crash, you'd like to see a trace, the list of instructions that were executed, so you can follow it back and sort of guess at where, which instruction or which set of instructions might have caused that crash. Thank you. <music>